Hi everyone, my name is Jake Zimmer. I'm a global offer manager on our Edge Racks team. So basically racks and enclosures outside the data center. Today we are going to talk about our new Net Shelter soundproof rack offer that replaces our former Net Shelter CX offer. Here to dive into it with me is our mechanical engineer, Rich Phillips. Hi, I'm Richard Phillips. Um, like I said, uh, design engineer on the soundproof uh, rack project. Exciting stuff, happy to be here. Uh, we are going to do a, a bit of a technical review today uh, of the offer. So. Let's start off, Rich. Um, you know, the Net Shelter Soundproof Rack, mm -hmm. very similar to the Net Shelter CX in the sense that uh, deploying IT where there's no dedicated space for IT. So, um, you know, from your perspective, um, you know, what, uh, what are maybe a couple of the biggest differences right off the okay. jump? So, very, very similar footprint. Um, functionality is very similar as far as the way you interact and put equipment in. Um, one notable uh, difference is this rack consists of a fully metal frame. Uh, so, uh, so everything's metal. Uh, we have a, a wood veneer roof and door for aesthetics. Um, so this, the metal frame, which uh, uh, greatly increases the structural uh, integrity of the rack, will allow for a, a larger uh, a load capacity. So to that point, Rich, the exterior, right? I think a lot of customers would look at this and say, well, I mean, it's uh, a rack and it has wood finish. Mm -hmm. It's it looks pretty much the same. So what right. makes this exterior different than the previous okay. offer? So the previous offer consisted of more of a particle board structure, um, which like th this offer now, like I said, is, is, a, is a metal frame, which which greatly improves, Im improves the rigidity of it. Um, so you'll, you'll notice, like I said earlier, the, the two different uh, surfaces here are, are wood finishes, where the previous offer was an entirely wood finish. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I, I mean, another word you had there was load capacity yes. too, right? Our load capacity was a certain number in the Net Shelter mm -hmm. CX. It's doubled now actually up to uh, 750 kilograms of dynamic load yes. um, in, in an enclosure like this. So, you know, is it is it that just that metal frame that essentially uh, allows us to increase that load capacity or what, what goes into us rating at a higher level? Yeah, so very, very much the it, it is the, the metal structure in this rack that uh, allows, uh, allows the higher weight capacity. So this metal structure is tied into the casters underneath. Um, which allows that load to go through the floor when you're rolling the rack around. So very much so that 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 tying all these metal components together improves that uh, structural integrity. Cool, crystal clear on the the frame piece. Mm -hmm. I think uh, another area that a lot of customers are going to ask is about the soundproof, right? Mm -hmm. So the CX, you know, was left up to interpretation. It's not left up to interpretation with this <laughs> offer of uh, of what it does and what it exists mm -hmm. for. This thing is filtering sound, so. Yeah. Let's open the enclosure yeah. and take a look. I mean, sure. how, how does the soundproofing in something like this work? So the way the, the soundproofing works in this rack is the interior is, is coated with a, a sound dampening foam, the entire inside of the cabinet, uh, which allows for around 18 and a half uh, decibel decrease. So this sound dampening foam, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. You know, this obviously will reduce the sound, but how technically does this work? You know, what about the foam actually suppresses the sound inside the enclosure? So the foam just allows the surface to absorb the sound waves coming out from the equipment inside the rack, as opposed to not having the foam and really having the sound transmit through a lot of the hard surfaces in the rack. This is my favorite part of these, and uh, we're gonna do a little demo. So we're gonna put the soundproofing to, to test. Are you ready? Yes, let's All do right, it. All right, let's try this out. Um, what kind of music you like? You like stuff with guitars, maybe with... Uh... Something loud, I have All right. bad hearing. Something loud. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, is this loud enough for you right here? Oh, this is good, a little synthesizer action going on, some guitars. All right, let's put this in the enclosure and find out what happens there. So all right, it's in, this is pretty loud. Oh my God, already it's dampened a bit. And I can barely hear this now. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that foam is really filtering out a lot of sound. How much sound is it filtering, Rich? So the rack is designed to, to reduce the, any noise generated inside the rack by 18 and a half decibels. Right. So this, you know, normally, um, you know, I think what we tested it for, Rich, was the average sort of edge deployment, mm -hmm. yes. um, you know, around 65 to 70 dBAs, mm -hmm. you know. We go down to around 45, uh, what does that compare to? Is that like ambient office noise or? Yeah, it's roughly background noise in an office. Is gotcha. That what it's designed to, to equate to. Cool, fun experiment. Uh, let's put that on pause. We'll open the enclosure back up here. And uh, I wanna talk about some of the internal components. Mm. Um, you know, a, a big feature that, you know, I think we should highlight today is the cable management piece. So uh, what is new in the cable management front in an offer like so this? So there's uh, multiple options for cable, cable management. There's uh, both cable management pass-throughs on both sides, as well as 
uh, you can see here the option to have uh, a use-based uh, cable management. So whatever the customer desire as far as cable management, whatever they see for their specific application um, could be met. Yeah, so like if I'm a customer here, why would that be valuable to me to have these brush strips on the front? You know, like is there, mm -hmm. um, where, where does this go? <laughs> How does that bring some value to me if I'm the customer? So it helps uh, a couple things, I guess. It gives you some retainment on your cables and it keeps them in place as well as um, keeps the airflow um, hot and essentially hot and cold aisles is what it's doing inside the rack. Sure. So if we turn this enclosure to the side now, we can sort of see the uh, where these cables will end up actually. And actually we'll close this part first. So we'll turn this over here. We can actually see you know, sort of the, the rear of the enclosure here. So, um, you know, I would assume, do the cables end up here, Rich? You know, what, yeah. um, and, and you know, what are we looking at in this part yeah, of the so essentially it would traverse this side of the rack back to the, whether they're gonna be power management or network cables to, uh, they would route to the back of the rack. And then there's a, we can show this in a minute, the cable pass through in the bottom of the rack to exit the rack. This thing right here, it's called a rear cable channel. Yes. What does it do? So the RCC is got a multiple functions. It can hold PDUs cable management, um, zip ties, uh, if, if you see that be the lowest level, I guess, zip ties as, as far as up to PDUs and other uh, network accessories that we offer. PDUs is a big piece, mm -hmm. right? So uh, a zero U PDU, for example, mm -hmm. you mount it vertically. Um, you know, where, uh, where would I put a zero U PDU on one of these things? Is, uh, do, you know, do I mount it uh, at a certain peg in here? You know, that, that looks like mm -hmm. somewhere where I'd, uh, I'd mount it yep. up. So that's for the toolless peg. So you can mount that anywhere along this that the PDU would fit, depending on the size of PDU that you select. Um, it can mount on this surface. There's also a, an, an RCC on the inside surface, essentially right here facing rearward to give you multiple locations for PDUs and network accessories. So max mounting depth as well is around, uh, it's around 32 inches in, in all, uh, all four sizes of this rack as well. Um, what if we have customers that say, you know, maybe my equipment needs to be, maybe it's not as long, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe, um, you know, maybe it's shorter depth or something like that. Uh, I see this rail back here, you know, do, do we, can we help them with this rail at all? Oh yeah, so there's uh, both, both front and rear rails have some adjustability. Um, there's, I think, about four, set, four settings on each rail that uh, allow for some customization within the rack uh, for whatever customer equipment they might have. So side panels, we've got one yes. off for now. Um, they, they both move, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. So Excellent. this is the rear, rear cable uh, side panel, and this will be the main, main side panel. Cool. We've got the key right now. We can even just show a quick demonstration like that. All you have to do is yank it out, basically, and you have a, uh, a functioning side panel there. Another big area uh, that customers will ask us, and I'm sure you know the more technical folks mm -hmm. uh, will will have the most questions about is is the cooling, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously, when uh, equipment you know uh, is running, it generates a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a way to efficiently reject that. Let's let's go over the cooling yeah. system just okay. a bit here. And, uh, and we'll dive into some of the, the, the technical details as well. So right now, uh, the biggest point here, um, you know, that I think customers will be attracted to, as I was when I saw this offer, was, well, the vent in the back looks a bit different. You know, the way I open the mm -hmm. back door looks a bit different. So tell us what's going on with this sort of shape right there and, yes. and maybe some of those perforations. Okay. So we have, uh, there's fans on the inside, which you'll see in a moment. Um, those fans vent into this, this chamber, which exhausts. That, that air, and there's also a foam dampening uh, inside this, this uh, ductwork to uh, help minimize the, the audible noise from the fans. Right, so you remember the old CX, we kind of had to clear it over that little hump. Yes. Uh, what's different here about that locking right. mechanism? So. Looks the same as the front, basically, or excuse me, the, uh, you know, our, our standard yes. swing handle lock. Yeah, our standard swing handle lock. So what are we working with here? There's a couple of fan modules mm -hmm. there um, and a couple of different um, you know, components right here. So first of all, uh, I see three fan mm -hmm. modules. Yes. Um, you know, what, what do we have going on with this unit here? So this is our active cooling. Our three fans will pull air um, in from the front of the rack through the equipment and then there's a, essentially a hot aisle back here that will get exhausted through the fans, through the door, um, out, out of the vents. Um, these fans are controlled via a thermal uh, or thermostat, uh, which is uh, temperature set by the customer. You can pick pick the, the temperature setting you like, and that will cycle the fans on and off as you as you need. 
So that's another good point too. Let's say, mm -hmm. you know, I'm the customer, I want a certain operating temperature inside the rack. Is that something that, you know, when I switch the, the thermostat, mm -hmm. will, am I setting the ambient temperature inside the rack or, you know, how, how does that work? Yeah, so it'd be the ambient temperature inside the rack. So if, uh, if you have uh, like a low load and, and it doesn't, doesn't heat up inside the rack, then the fans might not come on if that's something you desire. Um, or you can set it so that the fans are on all the time and always run. Right. Now, I see, uh, you know, a power bank here. I see mm -hmm. this power cord. Um, you know, how does the power get transmitted from the fan, you know, outward? Or, like, what's the power supply power. situation so, here? So power to the fan would come from uh, whichever method you choose as far as power management inside the rack. So PDUs, uh, either mounted in the RCC, which is here, and then there's a rear-facing RCC on, on the left side. Um, or you can also, like the, this rack is, you could have a rack mount PDU as well. So this I, I see immense value in for customers, you know, globally as well, that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's one power configuration somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's in the U.S. the, the standard 515 plug. You know, is, is this mm -hmm. compatible with essentially yep. uh, all of them? It has a universal voltage input of 110 to 240 volts AC. So it should work just about anywhere in the world. Yeah. So we're looking at a 17U enclosure right now. Um, the 12U will also have only one. But can you tell us about the, the other options as well, the 32U and the 38U? You know, what's different specifically about the fans in those? So they will increase in quantity going from uh, two units in the 32U to three units in the 38U. Um, and, and in the units that have multiple fans, you'll see a daisy chain. I believe there is a there are, are outlets on the bottom for power outlets for additional fan units. So on, on units with multiple fan units, you'll see an additional low voltage power cable come out of the lower fan units and, and piggyback to each uh, additional fan unit. So maybe, you know, obviously these will go into spaces that don't have, um, you know, a routine IT staff, mm -hmm. right? They will go into spaces that potentially, um, you know, they, uh, they're conditioned environments for sure, but they'll probably be left alone for the most part and not really opened with too much. Um, you know, if someone wants to monitor the internal temperature or maybe it's humidity or something like that, uh, what, what offer can we steer them towards uh, in that area? So that would be, uh, our NetBots offer would be ideal for that to allow some external uh, monitoring for, of the unit. And from your perspective, like from a mechanical perspective, mm -hmm. um, where, you know, could I put a humidity sensor somewhere in here? Could I just, you know, put it yep. like on the bottom, something yeah, like that? You definitely have uh, the two RCCs or, or any any space you would have. You'd be able to uh, mount even like lower side rails. You could mount sensors in those locations if if you happen to fill everything else up. Excellent. So, yeah. That makes sense. All right. So I've got my fan situation. You know, I've got my you know cable management all taken care of. Now I need a place to run this power out. Right. Mm -hmm. We mentioned power management. Um, how do I physically get all of this equipment? hooked up to power okay so really all your networking and power is going to come through the main entry uh for the for the cabinet which is located in the rear of the rack on the lower lower section so as you'll you'll see here there is a adjustable uh cable pass through that allows you to run any kind of power and networking uh cables that you need to through the lower uh, lower floor of the rack uh, then then after you run your cables you you can pull this uh this door back together reinstall the fasteners or retighten the fasteners and that allows for a, a, an air, airtight seal uh, on the bottom of your cabinet. And how do I get that out, right? Is that as simple as just unscrewing and sort of taking yep. the plate off, or how does that work? So as you can see in the back here, there's a, a couple Phillips head screwdrivers, or uh, screws rather, that can be loosened, and that allows this plate to move forward and, and rear. These might move around a bit. Right, you know, a customer might deploy this and say, all right, this looks good here. Mm -hmm. Then something changes with their retail store or, yeah. you know, their hospital room gets moved or whatever, and they have to physically pick this up and move this. Um, do they have to get a forklift in and try, <laughs> to, try to move it somewhere? Or how, how would they move it? Um, no, so ideally you would put this in location. You would uh, lower the leveling feet, uh, touch those down to the ground. That helps to secure the rack as well as uh, eliminate the mobility so that way it doesn't get bumped and moved around or you know put strain on your cables um, then when it comes time to move it again you would simply come down with a wrench and, and raise those leveling feet and then since in a sense put the weight back on the casters and you can roll the rack where you, where you need to yeah how do the leveling feet work is it a screw is it a uh, is it a pliers like how do you, how do you get those leveling so it would take an open and wrench uh, just a matter of spinning the the nut on the top of the leveling feet to, to raise or lower those uh, those feet Excellent.
Well, I'm pretty comfortable with the offer, Rich. Thanks so much for, for taking a, a quick deep dive into this and uh, hopefully some, some pretty good technical questions. Yeah, were well, thanks for having me. Of course. That'll do it for our technical review here for the Net Shelter Soundproof Rack. As a reminder, you can always approach your APC sales representative for more information on the offer. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.